Well, 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 some of the school districts went back to school today. It's that time of year, Kara, yeah. the start of another school year. And then we're heading back tomorrow, and heading back to the classroom certainly can bring a lot of excitement, but it also brings anxiety. Dr. Laura Saunders from the Institute of Living is here to tell us what we can do to help our kids start the school year off on the right foot. All right, so Dr. Laura, not kidding, nursery school dropout used to hug the couch, the legs of the couch, yes. and my parents would drag me onto the bus, and then they said, this isn't working, and they let me stay home. That's what my, Julian was that way. Yeah, seriously, okay, very good. <laughs> that explains a lot about you, Scott, thank it do, you. It does really um, explain a lot about me, which is the, the absolute truth. <laughs> right, so hello, friends, happy Wednesday. We're here to talk about some back-to-school basics. Um, <clears throat> you know, schools are starting sometime in the next week, maybe at the most 10 days. Um, what we know is that really every child handles adjustments differently. Um, we always take a developmental approach. How you deal with young children is different than how you deal with your either younger or older teens. Um, younger children may need more support. Older children may not want your support, although we all know they still need it. Um, so some things to tackle to improve the adjustment back. Let's start with sleep routines. Because we all know that sleep's gotten way out of whack for the summer. It's never too late to start to focus on some better sleep habits. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's low-hanging fruit, right? At least we can control that. So hard to make the kids <laughs> go back, uh, though. You know, like, Why do I, I, I want to soak up it. the last bit of summer. I don't want to have to go back. Low-hanging fruit. I love it. <laughs> but uh, so a consistent bedtime routine can really help with mood. Yes. Um, the two easiest ways to improve mood and energy are through improved sleep routines, more sleep, and nutrition. Doing some small things, you know, trying a new food, trying to have a little more balance in your diet, um, encouraging your kids to try something new. Um, so sleep and nutrition are the two easiest ways. In terms of managing anxiety about new routines, such as taking a new bus route or being in a new school, using some rehearsal driving the bus route so that your your child knows what to expect. Oh, that's a really Going good idea. Going to the new school, seeing something can be really helpful. That's awesome. I love that idea. I couldn't get on the bus either. My parents had to buy me a car. <laughs> I was not getting on that bus. I don't, I don't care what you say. Well, how do you know if your child's anxious? They sometimes won't come out and tell you, Mommy, I'm anxious. Or if they're a teen, they might get more angry or, or seem surly, right? Right. They They rarely tell you that they're anxious because identifying emotions is a developmental skill and and there's a lot of adults that even have difficulty um, identifying their emotions so what you know what we look for is changes in mood it could be irritability i think that's often a way that you know your child's more cranky they're more irritable they seem to get angry a little bit more or they're more sullen and withdrawn um, so asking them is there something that you're worried about or labeling it you could be worried about the fact that you're starting middle school and you're, you know, so so you can often label it for them. And again, it's still helpful to rehearse situations, um, you know, to encourage them to connect with a peer buddy, ask someone else who's going to be going to the same school, parents connecting with other parents um, to see what kind of connections are made. I'm honestly a huge believer in in the fact that school is equally as important as develop to develop social skills as it is to develop academic skills. Mm -hmm. So managing friendships, uh, focusing on peer relation, peer relationships. I always say you only need one friend to make life a little bit better. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, kids might be nervous. There's a lot of changing relationships, um, you know, at that age. So, you know, it, I guess it normalizing that, hey, you know, your friends are going to change a little bit. We're going to get a little bit more in-depth with some protocols and everything we can do to manage it on Kara's Cures coming up on WSB Plus, and you can listen on the podcast later. So we'll pick your brain a little bit more, Dr. Saunders. I look forward to it. Thank you. All right, good to see you. I'm not getting on the bus, though. I don't care what you say. Let go of your mother's leg. I'm, I'm still hanging on. <laughs> All right, thanks.